Declaration of Judgment. The basis of the uh, data that we want to collect is uh, a procedure called Comparative Judgment, or CJ. Uh, we mentioned it this morning. It's uh, the website that we're using is uh, with no more marking. And uh, it's interesting that there is a, a, an upsurge of interest in comparative judgment as a way of constructing scales, constructing measurement scales. And clearly the, uh, um, the No More Marking website is promoting the idea that comparative judgment, which is making relative judgments of what, what is better or worse, is more effective than asking raters to do absolute judgments where you ask them to say, how good is this script? And uh, uh, that's the, the, the whole strength of comparative judgment, is that it, it asks human beings to do things that human beings are good at. They're very good at making relative judgments. They're very bad at making absolute judgments. Okay? So, it's one way of generating the kind of data that we use in um, item response theory analysis. And could I just ask for a show of hands, how much do, I mean, who's familiar with the notion of item response theory? Not very many. That's okay, you, should, you needn't be because, because nobody else in this country is. <laughs> um, okay, IRT provides test scales, the, the opportunity to, do, to construct scales for assessment, which have the features of true measurement. And the best example I can think of is a thermometer. Okay? Why do thermometers work? They work because they all say the same thing. If thermometers all said something different, they wouldn't be very useful. Because they say the same thing, we can actually learn to interpret points on the scale. And we know perfectly well that a particular temperature means that you might stay off work for a day or something, but another temperature means that you really ought to be phoning the doctor or something like that. And we, we share that interpretation because the scale is exactly the same. Okay, and that's the idea of, of IRT, to construct scales like the temperature scales for physical properties, to, uh, to construct scales for... Um, for cognition or, or stuff like that. So judges can apply, they, they can judge, you can judge different tests on, on the same scale, basically. Okay, the easiest way to present this is to show you the model uh, that we use for constructing uh, exams, tests at Cambridge Assessment. It's, it's called item banking, and it's like the operational side of doing IRT, item response theory. You start with an item bank, and the item bank contains items which cover all of the, the levels that we're interested in, they're sort of overlapping, uh, and we, we, we've done that by pre-testing so that we've been able to compare things through pre-tests that have overlapping things. So our item bank it has, has one scale that um, runs from top to bottom. There's the measurement scale. Again, you can think of it like a thermometer. And it's, it's defined by the items in the, in the item bank. With that, we can construct tests at different levels. A harder test, an easy test, middling test. And, um, and then we can give those different tests to different groups of learners. This is a higher group, a middling group, a lower group. You give them the appropriate test at the right level, but we can compare all of those levels. How can we compare them? Because we know the difficulty of the items. We know that 70% you know, on this difficult test means a lot more than 70% on the easy test. So we can calibrate the position of the tasks and the people, and they all fit onto the same scale. And the other thing, which is very important, we can fit standards onto that scale. They're just points on the scale. And, and they will always come out the same. Even if the test is a little bit easier, a little bit harder, we can still hit that standard perfectly. Because we can do that, we can develop 
the understanding of the scale, like we understand the thermometer. This, this was just to show you how intuitive IRT is. You can see a person and an item on a, on a scale there. The person is higher on the scale than the item, therefore they are better. And, and that person has a higher probability of answering the question correctly, higher than 50%. If the person were lower, then they'd have a lower probability of getting the item right. So we're dealing with probabilities and, and, and we can use our probabilities, which are very accurate things. So here we are, this is what we're going to ask you to do now. We're going to take can-do statements from different sources, uh, various you know, parts of the world, uh, Australian, American, uh, English, British, the common European framework, and we want to put them onto a single scale. We do this by ranking them, and we will rank them in a specific way. We will ask you to, com make, to compare pairs. It's a binary judgment. You will look at two statements, and you will say this one is a higher level than that one. And that's all you have to do. If you do that often enough, you will finish up by ranking the entire set. Okay? You might think that ranking is just a, just, just a, a, a ranking. It's not very... Where are the standards? But the standards come automatically. If you have a performance which you agree is a, 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 a borderline A2 in the common European framework or a borderline B1, then you just put those into the mix and of course they take up their position and they define the levels. That makes sense, doesn't it? So it's simply that by relative judgment you can arrive at these um, uh, absolute determinations. And you can construct that beautiful measurement scale uh, which is exactly the same as you would get from doing uh, item response theory on other kinds of data. I wanted to show you this because this, this goes back to Seva 2008 we, this was a very nice way of verifying that this comparative judgment works. We had a, a rating conference in Paris, very expensive, uh, very good fun, but um, complex to organise. And at that rating conference, uh, raters, multilingual raters, rated samples of speaking performance um, against the Common European Framework and they were able to assign these two different levels of the common European framework. Okay, so that's very traditional. The same raters before the conference were asked to do a comparative study which they could do online uh, doing ranking. And you can see the ranking is on the vertical axis, the rating is on the horizontal axis. You can see that essentially we have a beautiful straight line which is showing us that the ratings and the rankings produce exactly the same results, which is you know, a very nice thing to discover. So basically we can, if we can just, you know, we can use rankings as being much simpler to work with than having huge rating conferences. No more marking them. There's the website. I would recommend you to go and play with it. I'm sorry we're not going to put it up for you today. I'm sort of phobic about Technology. I always know it's going to go wrong, so we're going to simulate the No More Marking site today. Um, and as I said, it's clearly promoting the idea that relative judgment is better than absolute judgment, so give up marking. There's a very serious study there, done by Ofqual, uh, about uh, standards of maths. And it shows very clearly that uh, in a, a given a given um, exam board doing a maths exam, GCSE, the standard will vary from session to session. There is no control over the difficulty of the, of the test. And between different exam boards doing their maths exams, again, there is significant variation across the standards which are applied. That was demonstrable by doing this study using uh, mathematician students, I think, students of mathematics, as the, the raters who rated the tasks one by one. Now, so this is where we get asked, we actually try to do some, something empirical. This is what you see, this is exactly what you see when you go online. 
you'll be shown two statements. And all you have to do is click right or click left. You click, if the, the question is which is the higher performance level, and you simply click right or left depending on which you think is the higher one. So one quite important thing about comparative judgment is we encourage people to do this quite quickly. The, the benefit from really kind of, you know, breaking your heart over whether something is harder or easier, there is no benefit. What happens, of course, is if everybody agrees that something is easy, it will finish up at the bottom. If everybody agrees that something is difficult, it will finish up at the top. If people can't agree because they're very similar, then they'll finish up in the middle. And that's the correct answer. Okay? It's the probabilities work out perfectly. So don't worry if you're not certain. Just say whatever comes into your mind. As it <coughs> okay, you've had long enough of that. Three, two, one. Next one. You can see the same one appears twice. There has to be linking. They have to all be linked to each other so that you'll see things coming up more than once. Okay? Off you go. Okay, here's number three. Off you go. Next one. Right. I thought you'd be interested to know where I took those from. And uh, you can see I've chosen two from Nasir. I've taken two from the CEFR. And I've taken two from WIDA. They're all, sorry, I should have said this is all speaking. Yes, that was obvious. I think. And I've chosen at each level of two steps. Step two, step three, A1, A2, level two, level three. Just to see, not, not expecting that two and three will mean the same thing, but just we have a ch chance now to use your judgments to say to what extent these align in a way we would expect them to align. Is there evidence that one of these groups might be working at a higher level or a lower level? Of course, we won't have nearly enough data to make statistically um, valid judgments just on your stuff. But this is the beginning, as I say, of what will, what will be quite a, a large data collection. Oh, of course. What are we really what are we really trying to achieve here? Okay, drawing on your experience, of course. We're trying to empirically equate levels in inverted commas here, referenced from different fields of work. There are many of these system is in order. And I, I hope that everybody will, who's perhaps has a particular brief for a particular set of scales will agree that what we are doing should be seen as complementary. I mean, the, the wonderful, like, like with the thermometer. Thermometers are great because they all, all tell the same story. So I'm hoping that the work we will do here will help produce a, a frame of reference which will all tell the same story. And to that extent, all of these uh, sources that we may involve and incorporate, uh, refer to, should benefit from having been sort of calibrated within this, within this scheme. That is our, our hope. I hope nobody will feel that we're uh, stealing their work or anything like that. So we will develop a, a better, we hope, shared understanding of levels. We can verify the performance of can-do statements because we will find that some statements people disagree about a lot more than others. 
uh, not simply because perhaps they're in the middle of the range, but because there are issues with them. They can be differently interpreted. And that's the kind of um, fit data which this analysis will provide you. It'll show you which, uh, are, the, which are the more um, credible and which are the sort of the more woolly and bit spread out uh, in the way they work. And we can construct scales with the potential to link different levels of assessment, different kinds of assessment, a classroom assessment, uh, formal external assessment. And this is, this is a really a big <coughs> possibility, isn't it? It'd be wonderful to think that you could talk about, I mean, at the moment, you know, you think about the GCSE uh, and, and what does it mean? It's very difficult to say what it means. And certainly to have evidence that would allow you to compare it with a proficiency scale that we develop here and say, yes, this is obviously testing at this level. You know, that, that's a very long way away. So here we have the potential of linking different kinds of assessment into a, a, a common frame of reference through the notion of tasks. Again, everything comes back to the task, the idea of performance on a task which, which refers to a construct which is progressive, a progressive construct. To pull. Okay, so that's it. If you would like to get in touch, and please do, those are our um, email addresses. Uh, if you have any more questions to ask about this.